Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here. Do you guys hear this, this desert background, all these birds? This is really cool. This is a perfect day. And I'm, I'm glad to be talking with you about thyroid disease for a little bit and how to diagnose it and how to not diagnose it, most importantly. There's so many that have symptoms they've had for a long time that have not been explained and they've been really struggling. And maybe they've had a family member with thyroid disease uh, and they suspect it because of that. Or they've heard from friends that have had it and took a long time to get diagnosed and to get on treatment. It is very badly underdiagnosed. There's a big disconnect between what can be done and what's commonly done. So I'm going to start out by talking about how to not diagnose it, the things that don't work conventionally, and also some things that, I, that don't work in the alternative world. The most common approach is to run a TSH only, a blood test, and look at the TSH normal range. Uh, guidelines even are more stringent than that. Many argue that even if you're above the range, then you've got to check the T4 and see if it's below the range. And by the most stringent conventional guidelines, unless you've got a severely elevated TSH, like 7 or greater, and a clearly low T4, there's no problem with your thyroid and it's from something else. So that's the first thing not to do. <laughs> uh, the, the tests are actually really good, but the ranges are awful. There's lots of data about how the ranges look in, in populations that have thyroid disease versus how they look in those that don't. And you won't stand out in a population that's sick if you're sick too. You'll be just like everyone else. And we want to really have a better comparison. So we want to know how the scores compare to the healthy people. And that's not done typically. So some alternative things that are done to diagnose thyroid disease, basal body temperature comes up. But Dr. Barnes had seen a lot of attempted blood tests not work out and a lot of them really fail for how well they could diagnose thyroid disease. So he used basal body temperature. And at the extremes, yes, your thyroid function does affect your basal body temperature. But since his time, we've learned that the ranges of basal body temperature in healthy people is a lot more broad than we used to think. So you can be anywhere, honestly, from like 94 to almost 100 and still be normal and fine. So there are severe states like hyperthyroid storm that will elevate body temperature, but not until it's so severe. And there's also myxedema, which will cause it to just plummet, but also only when it's severe. So your thyroid being off by even substantial amounts won't have a meaningful change in the blood in the body temperature, unfortunately. So not not accurate. And many talk about if you're not between say 97.8 and 98.4, that there's something wrong with your thyroid. You know that range is so narrow, and there's so many healthy people that are not in that range that it's almost meaningless. Almost everyone would be diagnosed by that guideline, and that just doesn't make sense then. Because not it's common, but it's honestly not everyone, of course. So temperature not not adequate. Um, Achilles reflex test does come up. So, you know, you go to the doctor, you get an exam, and they hit your knee with a little hammer and your leg shoots out, right? So that's checking a reflex. And your muscles are afraid of being torn. So if you lengthen a tendon, your muscle will contract so it doesn't get lengthened too much. And some places do that quickly. And you can see how good the involuntary nerves reflex work as a way of gauging the health of the nervous system. Now your thyroid function affects how reactive your nerves are in general. So if you're very hypothyroid, all of your nerves are moving slower. And that's why you can be more tired or more, more depressed or have a slower metabolism because there's less nerve conduction. And if you're badly hyperthyroid, you can be overreactive and you could have tremors or move in very jerky, erratic fashions and also have a rapid heartbeat. And that's because your nerves are overstimulated. And that does play out in some reflexes. So the same way you could check the knee, you can check an Achilles tendon reflex near the ankle. And it is true that those who are badly hyperthyroid have an exaggerated response. And those who are badly hypo have of sluggish delayed response. But also it's not really sensitive for all the in-betweens. So not a good gauge until it's way, way out there. Another one that comes up in the alternative world is skin iodine tests. So the idea is you can take an iodine antiseptic and put it on your skin 
And the, the theory is that if you absorb it very fast, you need iodine and your hypothyroid. And if you don't absorb it fast, then you're okay. Well, that one also didn't pan out. <laughs> and this is funny. There was a big test done in the 30s on this one. And they checked people that had thyroid disease, those that did not, some that were clearly iodine deficient, some who were not. They even checked dead people's skin. <laughs> they checked cadaver skin in this test. So here's what happens. If you put iodine on your skin, about 80% of it will absorb in the air over the next 10 to 20 minutes. 20% will absorb, but how much absorbs, how fast it absorbs, there's no bearing whether you're living or dead, <laughs> whether you do or don't have thyroid disease, and whether you've got enough or not enough iodine. So it's just pretty random as far as how you absorb it. Even dead skin is kind of random and how some absorbs it. So not, not a functional one. So what does work? Well, here's, here's my approach. You do want to do all the common blood tests, and you want to really have an eye for how they should look in the healthy populations. So specifically, you want to do a TSH test. You want to check the hormones released by the thyroid as well. The TSH checks how the pituitary tells the thyroid to work. The hormones released include the T3 and the T4. And the free versions of those hormones are more meaningful than the total version. If it doesn't say anything besides just T3 or T4, that means it's the total, and the free is a bit more meaningful. It's also good to check thyroid antibodies. So if you are attacking your thyroid, that's the way the gland typically gets diseased. So you want to see if your body's attacking it. And there's thyroglobulin antibody and thyroid peroxidase antibody. They're also called TG and TPO. There's also thyroglobulin. So it's not the antibody, but just thyroglobulin. That's a good measurement of how irritated or inflamed your thyroid is. And the last thing it's nice to check for a big screen is reverse T3. That's a byproduct of your body getting rid of T4. And sometimes that can be abnormal as well. The last thing I encourage for those who really suspect thyroid disease is getting an ultrasound. There's so many times to where people have nodules, goiters, calcifications, clear signs of Hashimoto's on the ultrasound, and yet they don't have measurable antibodies, or they don't even yet have abnormal labs. So that's a full workup. In terms of the labs, the one test that has the biggest difference from healthy populations to the populations typically tested is the TSH. Some argue that the free hormones, like the free T3, should be on the higher end of the range. I don't see data to support that. The healthy populations do show a big range of free T3 and a big range of free T4. They're not all on the upper end of the range. But the TSH scores in the healthiest populations are the lower end of the range, and TSH is backwards. So being on the lower end of the range means you're further away from being hypothyroid. And specifically, numbers above 1.9 are pretty suspicious. So if your TSH is above 1.9, you've got some strong symptoms, some structural abnormalities, that's thyroid disease, and it's time to treat so you can feel better. <laughs> so I hope that helps. A lot of ways that you can diagnose it, a lot of ways that miss it quite a bit, but it can be understood and it can be treated and you can feel better. We'll talk real soon. Bye-bye.